Hey friends, have you ever wondered what is a documentary of credit? Why are so many corporations around the world are using documentaries of credit? The short form is actually called DLCs. What are all the different utilities? How do you monetize it correctly? What's the difference between a documentary of credit and a standby of credit? What are the best times for your corporation to use a DLC instead of other banking utilities? You've got to really watch this video. Hi, I'm Tamar Zama from LanaCredit.ai. My organization is a world-class DF at providing funding to corporations. We do it uh, primarily to register the brokers, as well as banks, local banks, internationally for our clients. We also help companies access and monetize various banking instruments, SPLCs, DLCs, bank guarantees, medium-term loans, as well as provide a service that not a lot of people can offer, which is safe private placement programs that actually pay out money. You know, a common question I get is, Tamar, tell me how do I monetize a document or credit? Help me understand the procedures. Before I do that, I want to explain a little bit about various banking instruments. Banks have various different utilities for different needs. Uh, standby of credit, document of credit, bank guarantees, medium term loans, and so on. How you monetize each one of these instruments, when do you leverage them, uh, what's the best which utility for your transactions, varies depending on depending on your business needs and the situation that you're placing. A documenter of credit is oftentimes when two parties get together, they want to do a transaction. It's often, but not always, found in the commodity industry, uh, rice, sugar, oil, like that. Uh, it's oftentimes, but not always, is when parties are new to each other and they need a guarantor to step in to make sure funding for the transaction happens and they bring a third party called the bank into the equation. Said so differently, the bank becomes the guarantor for the documentary of credit for the funding to happen. You know, for the, for the years that I educate banking executives and business owners on banking structures, uh, banking strategies, uh, different ways of monetizing banking instruments, as a private uh, equity firm, what I've learned is that you know, people understand through story time. So for the purpose of this video, I want to tell you a story between Rob and William. Rob being somebody who wants to buy a commodity like coffee, and William, a guy who sells coffee, and I'm going to show how a document of credit is leveraged, used for a transaction, as well as give you some of the frequently asked questions people ask about leveraging DLCs. And before I go on, I'm going to tell you a little bit about LanaCredit.ai. We are a private equity firm. Uh, we're not a bunch of joker brokers. Uh, we actually get lots of joker brokers calling us every day trying to make a commission on different transactions. We actually monetize instruments ourselves depending on the instrument itself and I'll work with the two of the largest providers on the planet to monetize various banking instruments. Uh, the purpose of this video is we're not an investment company. We're not going to give you investment advice. We're not law firms. We're not going to give you any legal advice. We're not tax accountants, so we're not going to give you tax nor accounting advice. The intention of this video and all four other videos is simply for educational and entertainment purposes. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go ahead and do so right now. You will access various uh, lending funding programs around the world and how to benefit from participating with them. Uh, you're going to get access to out-of-box thinking strategies that work in terms of customers accessing capital. You will learn how to correctly monetize various uh, instruments, IBOEs, bank guarantees, medium-term notes. In this video, we document our credits, as well as access various safe private placement programs that actually pay out. So I'm going to talk about William and Rob. Uh, William uh, manufactures and uh, exports document uh, uh, coffee and uh, Rob actually buys uh, commodities like coffee. And uh, for the purpose of storytelling, uh, William is in China, exports coffee from China, Rob is in Canada and buys commodities like coffee and brings them into Canada. Let's imagine that the two of them got together and it's the first transaction. Rob needs coffee, William sells coffee, the price is right, Rob's done all the shopping around and decides to do a transaction with William. 
Rob may say to William, William, uh, I really like you. I, uh, this is the first transaction that we're doing together. And I like to issue, uh, I like to, uh, uh, you know, for us to consider how do we grow our business uh, with each other. And William says, you know, Rob, I really like you too, but I need to make sure that you're going to be able to afford me selling you coffee on a regular basis. So what I really want you to do is to give me a document of credit for the purpose of this transaction. Uh, so Robin will go to his bank and uh, let's say he agrees and goes to his bank and says, I want to uh, provide a documentary of credit, you miss a banker. And uh, the beneficiary of the document of credit, the person you're going to issue it is William's company. Uh, that. So uh, for the purpose of, uh, I just want to tell you the truth is there's probably 7,000 different ways of cutting this particular cake on a transaction. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to give you the six common uh, most frequently uses of DLCs and how to leverage them, how to monetize them for your benefit. Uh, but in full uh, disclosure, there's 7,000 different ways of doing a transaction like this using specifically documentary of credit. So uh, William and Rob get into agreement and let's say they agree that they're going to do $100 million uh, on the first transaction of William selling $100 million of coffee to a guy called Rob in Canada and when he was in China. What Rob will do is go to his bank and say, I've got a transaction, I need to pay for it, I need a specific, uh, I need a DLC. The bank, uh, and I'm going to use some wrong words, uh, but it simplifies the story thing. So I'm going to give you free, I'm going to give you a heads up, I'm using some wrong words, but just for the purpose of storytelling, it simplifies the storytelling aspect of it. The bank, when they agree to issue a DLC, a document of credit, in a very simplified way, what they're doing is creating an escrow account for that particular transaction for Rob and William. And when I say the bank, I mean specifically Rob's bank. So that Rob's bank now knows that Rob has a hundred million dollar transaction that he has to pay for. So the bank could do one of three options. Option one is they can say, Rob, you are one of 10 million customers we have at this bank. We're happy to support you with a document of credit. You, Rob, if you don't have a hundred million dollars, no problem. You can put 20% down. We, the bank, will fund the other 80%. We, the bank, make money. Keyword We, the bank, make money to charging an interest rate because that's what we do. We're in the lending business. We're going to charge you an interest rate for uh, the 80 million dollars that we're going to put up in that account. And Rob could agree on that term and said that, you know, I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And off we go. Another scenario is that Rob could be a startup company. Uh, I know when the coronavirus hit, a lot of companies, a lot of companies got started to get into a PPP business, and they were all startups. And banks don't know who the startup is. They may like the guy, they may know the CEO, but they don't know who the startup is, and they feel uh, shy or not comfortable in being the guarantor for the funding to happen. In that scenario, the bank would tell Rob, if the Rob is a startup guy, to say, Rob, you got a hundred million dollar uh, sale from uh, William. Good luck to you. Awesome. We're really happy for you. But you know what? That hundred million dollars, we'll set up an escrow account. We'll charge you our banking fees for that escrow account. But you, Rob, need to figure out how you're going to put up a hundred million dollars in that account. Whether you want to go get investors. Awesome. You want to fund another bank who will lend them. Maybe we'll, maybe our lending department will, you know, will want to learn about this and see if they can lend it. But you, Rob, are going to put 100% of the money out because you're a startup kind of thing. The third case scenario could be, uh, once again, there's 70,000 ways of doing this. I'm just going to give you the top six. Uh, the third case scenario would be for Rob. Uh, Rob could be a, a very large company like Nestle. Who, you know, they do billions of dollars in coffee and other kind of commodities. Rob could be um, Coca-Cola as an example. He could be a you know billion dollar, billions of dollars company and in which case the bank says, you know what Rob, we're just so happy to have your business that we will be a guarantor and provide the funding for this transaction for the DLC and you know between the billions and trillions of dollars of business that our bank is doing with you, with you don't worry about it, we'll figure out how we will take care of the funding and our fees for this. We just want you to be feel uh, that you've been taken care of. So the three aspects of what a bank would do in terms of issuing a DLC uh, for Rob, in this case, uh, they're issuing a DLC to Williams company. 
When this company now gets the DLC, and uh, he can now go ahead and provide the, the import, uh, import export, uh, the bill of lading, uh, import export papers, all that information to his bank to say, hey, I've got a sale coming in. Uh, Rob's company or Rob's bank is the one paying me $100 million. Uh, like that. Now, William's bank can do multiple different options depending on uh, William's relationship with the bank. Option one is William uh, could say, hey, uh, Mr. Banker, I got a hundred million dollar sale. That means I have to actually go buy coffee beans. I didn't have to process them. I didn't have to package them. I didn't have to ship them to Rob. Like there's all these things I need to do. I need some cash like right away, right away. And in which case Rob's, uh, Williams company would, uh, sorry, Williams bank would say, okay, out of the hundred million dollars uh, sale that you seem like you've got, we'll give you instant, instant access to 80% of the uh, face value of the DLC right away so that you can draw down that cash for yourself uh, and because you need cash to buy whatever you need to buy, the coffee beans, hire labor, you know, do your import exporting and that. So that's one option. William could have another option. William could say, you know what, my bank uh, really doesn't have really good terms when it comes to them lending money. Uh, maybe they're giving 60%, 50% LTV on the document of credit. I want to go shop around to see what are some other options I could have. A guy like William would often uh, find a private equity firm like us, like Red.ai, and will come and say, hey, I've got a deal. I've got a document of credit being issued to me. I want to monetize it. Can you give me a better offer, a better deal, a better something that I cannot get from my bank? Uh, with us at LineCredit.ai, we'll say, hey, no problem. I think we can do 80% LTV when your bank is doing 50 or 65%. Uh, here's the key. You have to get Rob's bank to issue the doc, and this is the correct way of monetizing a bank instrument. Uh, you have to get Rob's bank to issue the document of credit, not to you, William, but to the monetizer's name. So not to you, but to the monetizer's name. So now the monetizer in our case could be, I'll, I'll use the word between China and Canada, it could be DBS Singapore for various reasons. DBS is a very large uh, bank, um, DBS is close to China, there's all these reasons that, and by the way, Line of Credit actually has relationships with DBS Singapore. So now our DBS Singapore will become the beneficiary of the document of credit, will issue 80% LTV to William right away. Uh, so now William has the cash that he needs uh, to run his business and then on maturity date of the instrument our bank goes to uh, Rob's bank and collects 100% of the money. So that's the most common way of monetizing uh, DLC. Uh, the, third, uh, I have the third strategy for William is he may, not have, he may not have a need for cash or injection of cash into his company at all. William could have been you know, a very large organization and he may have a big cash reserve anyways. So he will take the document of credit from Bob's bank. He will wait on maturity date of the instrument. He goes to his bank, collects 100% of the money. He doesn't have to go and monetize it at 80% LTV or go to his bank and get 50 or 65% LTV. He'll just wait because he has the cash. He can pay for the expenses for out of his petty cash as an example. Uh, and collect his hundred million dollars at the uh, maturity day. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Now I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions, uh, which which I think is really cool. Uh, the first question, common question, I guess, Timor, what's the difference between document of credit and a uh, stand matter of credit? Um, stand matters of credit are. Um, it's a very desirable instrument. A lot of people love standby letters of credit because you can transfer it, you can sell it, you can use it as collateral, you can do 5,000 things with an SBLC that a DLC you cannot do. A DLC is primarily for import-export businesses. Uh, it's used as a, as a security between the importer and exporter. They can, um, the importer and exporter can have assurances on the transaction. So Rob could say, hey William, this is a successful transaction if you issue the coffee to me in, uh, in a cup, a uh, three by four kind of a cups as an example, or it has to be delivered by my dogs by this date. So there's all these conditions 
that ROM could provide to Lillian and these conditions must be formed for payments to be released uh, for uh, Lillian. So there are lots of benefits for uh, import exporter, especially for people who are new in doing business with each other to use a document of credit versus other banking instruments because of this assurances securities that a DLC provides. So that's one uh, w w one common reason and uh, difference. Another one is a uh, standby of credit as example, you have to wait for one month, uh, one year, one day for the instrument to mature. So you can go and take the cash out, a document terms of credit, the instrument uh, maturity date is usually shorter. It's between three months to 10 months. Uh, so if you're a business that requires access to capital a lot, uh, I have I just sounds even funny. I've seen countries, countries that need access to capital, that have credit facilities, but they don't need cash. The country will get into transactions and will use a DLC simply because of the maturity date is faster, sooner uh, than that. Uh, so those are some common questions that uh, c c common differences. Another one is with an SBLC. When you want to monetize the SBLC. Uh, maybe you get 50% LTV, uh, generally speaking 50% LTV a little bit higher, but a DLC it could be 70% and higher. So there's lots of uh, advantages to using a document of credit, specifically if you're in an import-export business, specifically if you're doing a transaction with a new party, uh, specifically if you want some conditions uh, around that transaction, and if you specifically benefit from a bank being the guarantor uh, on on that, uh, on for that money to happen. Um, one of the other questions I get is, uh, Tamar, if we want line of credit to be a doc, uh, be the monetizer for a DLC, uh, how does that work? Uh, so first of all, uh, generally speaking, our LTV on a document of credit is 80%. That's generally speaking. Uh, what we do is we tell the client the issuer has to issue it to the name of our bank. At the time of the transaction, we'll tell the client who, the, who our bank is and uh, you know what the closing procedures that that is. Uh, our fees are usually 1.5%, that's landacred.as fees. If we are coming across the client through broker or a broker, bunch of brokers, uh, it's usually at another 0.5% or whatever to make it a total of 2% uh, for a transaction. Now, please don't hold me again to our fees. Uh, because sometimes brokers have private agreements with their clients uh, and they may have uh, fees that have already pre-negotiated as higher or lower uh, f for a transaction of the DLC to happen. But landcred.ai's fees are 1.5%. Uh, we can monetize the instrument generally speaking between 3, 5, 7, 10 banking days and that. If it's a large instrument, it needs to be uh, deployed in chunks. Uh, so, but generally speaking, uh, again, the keywords generally speaking between three to ten banking days. Uh, the process for us in Malta is a document of credit. The client must come in with a document of credit and their KYC. Uh, so we have to see that. We'll then issue a uh, fee agreement for us. Uh, if the document of credit has not been issued, no problem. We'll provide the uh, once again we'll provide a service contract for fees uh, to be signed. Uh, the procedures, the closing procedures that we need. Once the client signs off on it, we, our bank, will work with the client to execute on that transaction. Uh, generally speaking, when clients choose us versus their own bank uh, and or what I refer to as joker brokers, it's simply because of our bank expertise and simply because we keep our promise of uh, providing a higher LTV than banks or, or, uh, or what brokers can provide. Generally, generally that, that would be it. Uh, one question I get, which I thought was interesting, is uh, if William doesn't need cash and he has to wait for the maturity date, um, is there other things that William could do? And the answer is yes. There's lots of ways where William could leverage that document of credit while he's waiting for the payment date. Uh, here's what I want to say. Uh, there are lots of, um, I think the better word for me to use is tribes. There are tribes of people that are in the commodity industry and they are in the gold business. They buy and sell gold all day long. There are people who uh, buy and sell silver all day long. There, uh, there are people who buy and sell stocks all day long, uh, like, like corporate company stocks from NASDAQ, TSX, and so on. In the same uh, family of tribes, there are also tribes of brokers that buy and sell 
uh, my monetized documents credit all in on. Said differently, there are companies that I need access to credit facilities and they're willing to pay a fee for it. So if you're rich enough to have a DLC and you're able to wait on it, there are lots of ways of going to one of these uh, DLC buy and sell tribes and leverage your DLC and there's some strategies required to learn how to do that uh, to generate some extra cash flow while you're waiting for the maturity of the transaction. If you're interested in that, please feel free to book a consulting call with us. You will learn you will learn what they are and how they are and, and how how was how you can benefit from it. Um, another common question again, which I really like, is uh, what are some other reasons or vehicles of DLCs being used? Um, so now I'm going to have a uh, a mature conversation. This is a conversation that's not easy for somebody who doesn't have a lot of banking or, or financial experience to understand this. So I apologize. I'll try to simplify it as much as I can. When a bank stands into gets into a transaction as a guarantor, so a DLC is when you have a buy and seller, but the bank is standing in, coming into that relationship as a guarantor for funding to happen, for the beneficiary, this is a different way. Now, now, now you have to think a little bit differently. So I'm going to invite you to uh, think outside the box. It's a different way for you to think or consider you have something called proof of funds. Imagine if you're William and the bank is standing in and has a, in a document of credit, they are providing something called, I am going to be the guarantor for the funding. A different way for you to think about this is you have something called proof of funds. You can demonstrate that you have access to capital that's coming in. So why is that helpful? Why is that important for you to know? Why is that different for you to think about? Well, if you are a corporation and you need to expand your business and you have a rich investor, forget the fact that, just for a minute, don't forget the fact that the rich investor is a bank and they're really not an investor. They're just giving you a document of credit where the beneficiary is a proof of funds. Um, when you have something called proof of funds, you can leverage it for many ways. You can show your net worth is higher, as an example. You can show liquidity in your organization. If you want to purchase other banking instruments, like for instance, uh, a bond, when it comes to buying a bond, you do need to show liquidity. You have access to capital or something like that. Proof of funds really helps out. If you want to get into a real estate business, you need to show proof of collateral. You know, you need to show collateral. Again, if you have proof of funds, it really helps out. So there are different ways to, uh, I'm going to invite you to think out of the box. I didn't say illegal. We never, ever, ever do anything illegal. But I'm going to invite you to think outside of the box uh, for you to consider a, a, a DLC that's being issued in your organization's name, has a lot of advantages and you can leverage this as collateral for your transaction. So you can use DLCs for profit creation. If you want to participate in tribes that are in the buy and sell of it, you can use a DLC for um, proof of funds. Uh, you know, there's so many different vehicles of it. But another one, a common one is, I, I hear this all the time, is Tim, I've been shopping around to go get a high yield TV and it looks like everybody in the industry is giving the same kind of range of LTVs. Do you earn on a credit because you guys are so creative? Do you have any out of box uh, solutions, experiences that you can talk about? And the answer is yes. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the insurance industry. Uh, so fact is, not a credit AI uh, is we're head office. You know, all of the global projects is in Toronto, in Toronto, Canada, and this is true for my American colleagues. I can go to my bank. So please hear me out. I can go to my bank and buy insurance products. That's actually the fact. I can go to my bank and can buy car insurance, life insurance, home insurance from my bank. And this is just something that's, a, I don't want to say it's a change that's recently happened. That's not true. But in the past 20 years, banks in developed countries like Canada, United States, have got into other businesses like insurance and offer insurance related services. That's, a, that's actually true as a fact. However, what you want to know is insurance industry hasn't been sitting around playing with their thumbs. They were actually got into banking businesses as well. And so if you know which insurance company to approach, who to approach, what programs to participate in, 
you can take a documentary of credit, a transaction that you're doing, and instead of having bank being the guarantor, you can replace it with an insurance company being a guarantor. And let me tell you, the numbers are extremely, extremely different. Uh, different. So if you were talking about a $10 million, uh, I'll, I'll talk about a simple one, just a simple one, $1 million document of credit. Let's just use 1 million because the numbers are a little bit easier to comprehend. Uh, so let's say William and Rob decide to buy and sell coffee to each other. Uh, sorry, sell, sell coffee to each other. Uh, sorry, I should say that <laughs> differently. William agreed to sell uh, coffee to Rob uh, for $1 million. And so William has a DLC for $1 million. If he comes to do that LTV game between his bank, our bank, whatever, he's getting 50, 65%, 80, eight, may maximum 85% on that document of credit using a bank. And that means he's getting maximum 800,000, maybe 850,000, more likely 650, $700,000 on a document of credit for $1 million. That's what, that's the cash William's getting. Now, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? This is unimaginable, and I'm just truly unimaginable. Remember, remember, I said you can replace the bank with an insurance company, so the guarantor now becomes an insurance company. The insurance company can leverage a documentary of credit <coughs> and sub getting eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars as example. Are you ready for this? Because this will now make me sound like a professional a liar and publicly and I'm announcing this, but this is this twice we've now seen this not once but twice we've seen this in the last month the insurance company will provide a hundred and ten million dollars cash instead of eight hundred fifty thousand dollars now if you're a business owner would you go to insurance or would you go to the bank if you want to monetize a bank instrument now when i talk about the insurance thing uh there's lots of scenarios that this uh, this can be a 10-hour video but the truth is that insurance companies do want to increase their lines of credit. They have access to capital and they can do some very creative out of box thinking depending, depending on what, where they are on their business cycle. Uh, and that's a whole different discussion, but insurance companies just like banks need access to capital, need to increase their revenues, need to buy and sell their own instruments. And some of them, depending on uh, if they feel or have the experience of being cash poor, can create some very uh, ethical, 100% ethical, 10,000% legal uh, programs that give provides funding to businesses that banks uh, simply can't provide. If you want to learn about DLCs, how you can leverage them for your business, which strategy is best for you, please reach out to lionpred.ai. You are booking a consulting call. It's a paid consult call will be happy to look at your instrument your situation and and see how to best uh, support you with our experience and what we can do for you uh, my name is Tamer Zaman thank you so much and I look forward to the option of working with you thank you Kind enough to spend some time with me today reviewing some of your client files. Thank you. Can you tell my audience a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what did you get out of our time together? Yes, my name is Debola and I'm based in the UK. I've been working as a funding solution for clients looking for business funding for projects for my clients. And I met uh, Mr. Zama. Pardon? And these are big projects. Yes, they're big projects in the million all over the world from UK to Africa. So I met Mr. Zaman over um, the, on the internet while, while I was searching for more broker, more genuine brokers. And I was um, fortunate to get a meeting with him, which I'm on at the moment. And I've learned a wealth of knowledge. In my last one year, I've not had this knowledge of information. And I am more than excited to be on this call with him i've learned about what two items i've learned about i don't know if i should disclose it <laughs> custodian and um the hybrid ppi that those two uh they've blown me out of the waters and i'm just 
thinking, am I going to be able to sleep tonight? Thinking of what I'm going to do with those information. It's, it has been amazing. I've learned a tremendous lot. In, and and in you made last, a prom- in and the last forty five minutes, <laughs> and, and you promise you become a you're gonna become a millionaire working with our organization yes. and join the millionaire club. I'm of going the- to be one of the millionaires. It's oh. settled. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, Abla. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs>